What's up everybody, I'm Raph and this is our beautiful bearded dragon Bartaby. As I've mentioned before on this channel, uh, we did get into reptiles kind of on an impulse. So if you're anything like us, the regular husbandry and stuff like that as far as temperatures go, that can all be found pretty easily on the internet. But what about the little things, you know, um, talking about hydration and not that that's a little thing, but it's something that's kind of glanced over sometimes. So anyway, today we are going to show you how to give a bearded dragon a bath and a nail trim. And you know, if you already know how to do this stuff, guys, then we just hope you enjoy Beep Spa Day with her. But before we get into that, and Bartaby's excited to get in the tub, rub-a-dub-dub, -dub. if you like reptile content and that's the sort of thing you're watching on YouTube, like this video and consider subscribing to our channel and we'll keep bringing you more twice a week. Here we go. How to, how to bathe your bearded dragon. We're going with about shoulder depth water, shoulder depth for her, and uh, around mid 80s is pretty safe for them. That's around where their body temperature is gonna be after basking anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and get her in and talk about why this is a good idea. Oh, pardon. <laughs> So as you guys may know, bearded dragons are a drier or lower humidity species, but that doesn't make hydration any less important. So a big thing that comes up, can they be kept without a water bowl? They can. I don't know why you wouldn't provide them one. But these supervised baths and soaks are, are good too to kind of keep them in there for maybe a little more time than they would necessarily want to. Beep's not the biggest fan of a bath. I'm just trying to get her to drink maybe a little bit. Um, I think she's good and hydrated. We also missed uh, in the evenings a couple times a week and that keeps her hydration up as well. And again, with the shoulder depth water, look, most reptiles are naturally pretty good swimmers and bearded dragons can definitely swim in a larger pool of water. I'm just not sure how long they could tread water, let's say. So I don't want to put her in the position where we put her in a bunch of deep water and, and try it out and see if she can survive in there for a while. So a nice low shallow bath is going to be completely fine for these guys. They also absorb water through their cloaca or vent or poop chute, whatever you want to call it. And um, so this is definitely providing enough depth for that. Another thing is this is a really good way to get your beardy to poop. And I'm kind of waiting for it now. She just shifted a little bit. She might be thinking about pooping. Look at her keeping her tail out. That is hilarious. She's like, no, no wallies. With that natural laxative concept, um, it's not a bad idea if you're worried about impaction. Look, especially as adults, these guys... As babies, they're gonna be pooping a lot and you're gonna know they're pooping. But as adults, uh, with the slower metabolism and things like that, you can't bank on like a poop a day, you know? So if you're like us and a little bit paranoid sometimes trying to make sure that these guys are healthy and you're worried that maybe they're not pooping and they might be, might be impacted, right? Uh, give them a soak because a nice warm soak might just uh, loosen everything up just enough to put your mind at ease and your nose not at ease. Before we get into the uh, nail trim segment of this, and also I wanna mention your beardy is gonna enjoy or not enjoy the bath that, you know, individuals are all different. So maybe your beardy really hates the bath and maybe you give them a little bit of a deeper thing where they can't just jump out of, or maybe you just deal with it and have fun trying to wrangle a wet dragon. We're gonna try to get some, some close up footage of Beep in the bath for you, right Beep? You like it in there? Oh. So as you guys might see this darker coloration now under her beard, the bearded lady. So that's kind of an indicator of an upset animal. And uh, yeah, again, like I said, Barbie's not the biggest fan of bath time. 
but you know it's not the biggest deal it's definitely not harming her so we're just gonna keep her in there we're gonna let her soak up some more water The other day I noticed Bartaby was puffing her beard out a bit, um, but not in a defensive manner. It wasn't dark or anything like that. She was completely light in coloration, but she was puffing that beard out. And that's, uh, in case you didn't know, that's an indicator that they might be loosening that skin up for a shed. And uh, I don't know if that's what she's trying to continue to do. She does that scratchy thing when she, <laughs> there it is, when she has a uh, loose shed on her. But um, I really can't say for sure if that's what's going on. But it could be. So Bartaby climbed her own way out of there. Uh, another indicator that that swimming behavior was pretty voluntary and something that she wanted to do because uh, she could have gotten out at any time. I might burrito her for a second and just let her dry off. There we go. A beardy burrito. No poop this time. I don't know specifically what day she pooped last, so that's not necessarily anything to worry about she definitely poops regularly because we got to go in there and take out chunks of chunks of dragon poo right Bartuby? also another thing we noticed uh maybe they do quite enjoy water uh we don't see her in her enclosure in her water bowl too much but you know that's not to say that when we're not in there she's not using it that black on her beard kind of seemed to go away when she was doing all that like swimming around and and slithering through the water so that was pretty Pretty darn cute, Bartaby, that you enjoyed that. I'm glad you I'm glad you had a good time. <laughs> day is not over yet so the next and last thing that we're gonna do for Bartaby spa day here is a little mani petty right who who doesn't love a nice mani petty bearded dragons have these uh relatively intense claws for a reason they are climbers they're definitely semi-arboreal animals and they use those nails to lift themselves up on rocks and things like that it's nothing that's gonna send you to the doctors but a beardy can definitely scratch you up, especially if you let the nails get out of hand. My bigger concern, right, because if she's healthy, it's like people who get cats declawed, dude. It's like, what are you doing, man? It's a cat. That's a large proportion of what the cat is, is their claws. They do a lot with those claws. So it's not so much I'm worried about uh, me and I'm worried about my experience with handling, but Bartaby when we were letting her nails kind of just go crazy as she was growing up as a baby, she probably would have not enjoyed a nail trim at all. She had one that seemed to be a little too long and she actually lost that claw. And now it's, it's growing back, but it was down pretty much to a nub and it was bleeding when we noticed it. So, so let's hear a tangent real quick. Don't use reptile carpet. Yo, these guys' nails, like even this is a little iffy, but I'm watching, right? So if I see that some one of her nails are stuck in this, in this cloth, I can kind of guide it out without go, pulling against it and ripping it off. But lizards can definitely rip off their fingernails in reptile carpet. And it's a bacteria breeding ground and don't use it, don't use it. Hey, I'm not, I know I use loose substrate. A lot of people get mad about that. Look, she's been on loose substrate for a long time, eating off it, never been impacted, poops like a machine, okay? But I'm not even saying you have to use loose substrate. Um, you know, tile and slate and things like that are going to be fine for these guys, and their nails can't get stuck in it. 
Also, Rock will, you know, effectively file these nails down for you. So what I'm trying to say here is I'm just going to get these claws maybe just a little, just a little shorter so that she doesn't have to worry about getting them stuck in anything. And when she did have them stuck and this one got ripped off, I think they were a bit longer than they are now. So we don't have to take off much at all. Another thing I want to mention real quick, as you can see, um, this whiter part here on the fingernail, that's like essentially their nail bed, right? So you do not want to go too far up into there because there, there's where you're going to find the blood vessels and nerve endings, right? We want to avoid that as much as possible. So we're just going to take, you can kind of see where the last time we cut right here at the end of the nail bed, you see how it kind of ends. So I'm basically just going to be taking off this little tip here and that'll give her enough to where she can climb but also not enough where it's more likely to get stuck in things. What I'm using here, these are nail clippers designed for cats, I believe. These are marketed for cats. Um, basically what it does is obviously these nails are much a different shape than our nails, right? So if I'm using a regular nail clipper, like a, you know, one that we use, a human nail clipper, it's a lot of just crushing, you know, flat across because our nails aren't little cylindrical spikes right what these do here is it's gonna it's gonna apply that pressure evenly in a more conical type uh orientation or, or shape so uh that's why we're going with these and we're gonna try to get a little closer up we'll see if barnaby will let us give her a manicure so here we go again guys i'm really not taking off much at all there we go and see how she didn't react whatsoever. I mean, I don't know if you could have seen her face right there, but she literally didn't move. It's more of this, oh, maybe she wants to eat the nail clippers because they're yep. red. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, we're not going to do that, Barnaby. It's okay. Take off a little bit right here. Yep. And as long as we're not getting any reactions from her, it's nothing bad. Because honestly, she'll try to pull away just because she's over it. So if she's not even pulling away... As I'm cutting these, I'm really not worried about me doing anything to her. Honestly, we did trim one, literally just one claw, a little too short one time, and she definitely didn't like it. So, but now I know what to look out for, and she recovered just fine. Good job, Barton. Next hand. No. Nope. Can you come back? <laughs> come right here. Perfect. You're a star. You need your manicure. You need to be a star. Part of the team. You're doing so good. Petty guys. She is, it seems like a lot of animals are a little more protective over their back feet. I know our cats definitely are. But I don't think she's doing okay for now. Tiny nub there. And the last one for this foot. Barbie, you are doing good, baby. A little handling tip, and maybe you don't have one yet. Uh, bearded and dragons, they like climbing things, right? And part of that is being secured to whatever they're climbing. And a big part of that for them is support on these back feet, right? They have to feel like they have something to grab here. Watch this. I'm, I don't do this all the time. I'm not going to continue to do this. But if I just have her here, she's going to go absolutely... Oh, maybe not. Maybe you don't care. Oh, well, she's getting her feet back up there. But if I'm just holding her like this, yeah, this is very uncomfortable. You can calm them down very quickly. Just support all four of those feet. Well, I'm just, I'm kind of letting her run away when she wants to and just kind of bringing her back. You don't really, with a lot of reptiles, you don't want to restrain them and grab onto them and hold them tight in a spot because that just makes them feel like they're in danger and they're being uh, threatened by a predator. So 
be patient with your reptiles, guys. They might move around. I understand you don't want them, like, running under the couch or something like that, and then they get stuck, or, you know, our cats are out right now, but Bartiby's the most confident around the cats, and we're, we also have four eyes on the whole situation. So that's not really a big issue, but, uh, yeah, when you can let them do what they gotta do, move around freely and just kind of bring them back to where they started. That's probably the best way to go about keeping them in one place. Last place. Seems like these back ones barely had any new growth on them. Goes to show she's climbing and using her naturalistic background that we built her, right, Barbie? Good job, baby. One more final step to spa day that Rachel uh, reminded me how how could I forget? She needs a treat, right? She was such a gem. She was so calm, except all those times that you tried to get away from me. But that's okay. So, we have something that Bartiby really likes, but she doesn't get too much because fruits have a lot of sugar, and these guys do not metabolize sugar as easily as we do. Really, neither do we, but that's a story for a different time. We're going to give Bartiby a couple of blueberries here, and I think she's really going to like them. Bartiby, what's this? <laughs> okay guys so that's gonna do it for today's video we hope that hey if you knew how to do this already like i said earlier we hope you just enjoyed Bartaby's take on a spa day and uh if not we hope you learned something today and that'll make your keeping maybe a little bit easier hopefully make your beardy a little happier with all that being said guys if you don't like this video and you don't subscribe to this channel Bartaby never gets a blueberry again so I mean, it, 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 are, are you okay with that on your conscience? Uh, that's up to you. As always, we hope you really enjoyed this video. Once again, I'm Raph. This is Bartaby. This is Red Ribbon Reptiles. And we'll see you next time.